but I'm tired of waiting. So I'm just going to accept whatever comes my way. And then you accept it and then you pay the price for it. So many pe people today, so many of us are paying the price because we did not exercise the patience that's needed. Here's why you need to understand about God's timing. God always see the bigger picture. God always see what I don't see. When God tells you, wait for my timing, wait for the moment that I'm going to release the house to you, release that husband or that wife or that finances. When God tells you, you can feel in your spirit. You know what? I just don't feel like it's time right now. Don't ignore that. Because God sees things five years in advance. One thing people don't realize is that most people make a decision with a short sighted vision. A short sighted vision is saying you're only looking at within the next week, sometimes the next two weeks or even just that that month. You're thinking about what happened, what's going to happen within that month. But God is coming from a perspective of five years down the line of 10 years down the line. There's so many of us that we've made decisions to that we, we wouldn't think five years later. I know for me, I've made choices. Maybe not you. I've made decisions that I did not think about five years later. I did not think about 10 years later. Especially significant decisions. When you have to make significant decisions, major decisions. You got to think about five years later, what impact is this going to have on me? So when you go to God and pray and you're praying about something, God is saying, listen, I know what's coming five years from now. I see what's ahead of you. You don't see that. And because I see what's coming, I need to make some adjustments for your own sake. But what do we do? God, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. God's perspective is not our perspective. God always sees things from a different perspective than we see things. And because God sees things from a different perspective, he approaches things differently. God do things, moves in a different way. Another reason too is this. Another reason is this. It gives you the opportunity to grow while you're awaiting for God to bring his promises to pass in your life. This can be a great opportunity for you to grow. There was season in my life that I was waiting on God. And as you grow, you're always going to be waiting on God for something. I took that opportunity and I'm taking the opportunity to grow. I'm taking opportunity to spend time in prayer. If I got to take an extra course, if I got to listen to some more messages, if I got to do this, whatever I need to do, I am taking the opportunity to grow. So while you're waiting for your answer from God, that is the best time for you to grow. That is the best time for you to grow, grow personal growth. Most people don't invest in their own personal growth. And unfortunately, that comes to really hurt you a lot. Because when God is waiting to open up doors for you, God is watching what you're doing in the downtime. There are people that believe waiting on the Lord means you sit down, you don't do anything, you don't go anywhere, you just wait. Waiting doesn't mean you do nothing. While you're awaiting, you're still learning. While you're awaiting, you're still praying. While you're awaiting, you go back to the last thing that God told you to do. When you feel like you're not getting any okay from God to move forward in a particular area, when you feel like you're stuck, I want you to go back to what God told you before. Because so many times God's delays or God's timing is because God is saying, I've given you three instructions in the past five years. And you've not followed a single one of them. So until you go back, you got to backtrack. You got to backtrack. I want you to look at your life. There are things that God told you to do that you have not yet done. 
Yet you want God to keep adding to the list to do list. God will never add to, to your to do list until you do those things that are already on that list. So we're waiting. Oh, Lord, I've been waiting. But God is saying, I gave you three simple things for you to do. And it's been five years. You haven't done any one of them. You haven't done any and you are waiting for more. You waiting for more. God is saying, I can't give you more because you got to go back. And do those things. Preparation is something that takes time. And I know that God is preparing you for something massive. Whenever God is preparing you for something massive. God is going to be silent for a season in your life. Sometimes it can be a week about a specific topic. Sometimes it can be a month. Sometimes it can even be years. Now, when I say years, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that as people. You know, I've seen a lot of celebrities today that became famous, but their character could not match their position. God opened up doors for them at a young age. And you see them, this one is strong on drugs. This one is messing up hair. This one is going through, this one's suicidal. This one is dealing with all. They are dealing with so much because when God wants to announce you to the world, he got to make sure that you're ready for this. We see all, all the stuff going on right now. All the different exposures going on, all the different deception going on. If God is going to put you at the forefront you need to go through a preparation that is going to be painful. I don't know any other way to say this. God's timing is something that you can never predict when it's going to change. Now, there are times when God can give inclinations to, you know, this here and there, but you don't know. So you have to be prepared. You got to spend time in the word. When is the last time you took your Bible? Like, you know what? I'm going to spend time in my Bible today. I'm going to read the word. I want to grow. Lord, I want to grow. But yet during that preparation time, we do nothing but just complain. And I've been there myself, too. So I'm not just talking to you. I've been in times when I was supposed to be preparing, but I spend more time complaining. Instead of preparing. And whenever God's timing is being delayed. It's because your attitude is not right yet. Some of us have an attitude that we have been in that God's delay for a long time. There are some of you that the reason why your prayers are not being answered because your attitude ain't right. Your attitude is not right. God is saying, nope, you got to check the attitude. I cannot give you a response until you get the attitude together. When you have kids and they start to act up, start to do all crazy things. You don't give a kid stuff they want when they act up. When they throw a temper tantrum, I don't know about you, but I've seen parents that when their kids start to, you know, throw a little temper tantrum, start to cry, scream and shout, oh, you want ice cream? They'll give it to them. Oh, you want this? They'll pacify them. God is not a God that wants to pacify you. He don't, God don't do that. So until your attitude, this is a big one for a lot of people. Your attitude is the reason why God has not answered your prayers yet. Why it's still being delayed? Because you got to you got to check yourself. Your attitude is stopping your breakthrough. That right there is deliverance for someone. Your attitude is stopping your breakthrough. We don't have the right attitudes when we're waiting on the Lord. We do nothing but complain. You can never force God to respond to you sooner than he's ready to. I think sometimes we think that the more we nag, <laughs> I know people, they've made come like, you know what? I was nagging God because I thought that if I nag too much, if I complain a lot, then that'd get God's attention. 
man, if you don't know, let me tell you, the more you complain, the more you nag, the longer it takes for God to respond to you because God wants to polish you. And the only way for God to polish you is for you to get in a position that even though you don't see how things are going to work out, even when you get frustrated, you have to build the capacity to know that, God, I'm waiting on you and I am going to be pleasant while I'm waiting. I've seen people that are so unpleasant, you can't even be around them. If God want to send you to the nations, God can't send you with, with, with a nasty attitude. Come on. God is not going to have you represent him to the nations with a nasty attitude. He's not going to do that. So God will allow you to get squeezed. He'll allow you to get pressed. He'll allow you to go through hard times. He'll allow things to shape you, to mold you, to build you up. Because there are people that you're going to connect to that they need your strength. Someone has been going through so much that they are dependent on your strength in order for them to get through what they're dealing with. So God has to build. you. It's not just for you. God has to mold you for the people that you're going to meet. God has to strengthen you for the people that you're going to inspire. You're going to inspire the nations. People are going to come to you crying. 